Hello viewers, I am Sanjeev Pandya welcoming you to the tax talk right here on ITV Gold. This weekly show gets you all the tax related information that you need to know. Remember it's information, guidance and suggestion as far as the tax is concerned. If you have not filed your 2021 taxes yet, time is now to file your taxes and in case if you're confused and want to know more information you can always reach out to size cps services with their multiple locations in the state of new jersey they will definitely help you out guide you over the phone over zoom or in person virtual consultation or in person consultation is also available you'll see that information right here on the screen and during the show whatever topic that we discuss if you have any question you can always send us an email tax talk at itv gold.com now all these tax talk, tax talk and all this information is made possible by one gentleman, that's Mr. A.J. Kumar, CPA and MBA with Science CPS Services. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Sanjeev. I appreciate the introduction. All right. Thank you so very much. Last week, we discussed virtual currency, cryptocurrency, and a whole lot of detail that, that uh, we did. Absolutely. Hearing. All right. So now, let's just go a little easy on our viewers mm -hmm. today. Even though with the useful information, but not confusing them with so many tax related information tax brackets and this and that meaning it's important topic but it's a something that um, you know everyone should know this country usa obviously you know um, gives it's it's a it's a free ride and um, you know entrepreneurship is the key thing here everyone wants to be entrepreneur everyone wants to have their own business the ideas in this country prosper and the companies grow and we have seen millionaires, multimillionaires, or billionaires, you know, in this country. But the point is that what kind of company that you should set up? There are several kinds of companies available from, you know, um, corporation to uh, S corporation, C corporation, LLC and uh, partnership and whatnot. So first you should know that what kind of company you want to set up based upon your own taxes and everything else. And that's what we're going to discuss that how do i do my business structure start with uh, number of companies you know uh, the the categories available right? absolutely please of course it's my pleasure yeah. so you're 100 percent right this country is a land of opportunity you want to do something start your business the question that we are trying to address okay i have decided to start my business what now what type of business how many options are there what decides what type of company I should be starting. So let's take a step back first. There are five types of structure in this country. Yes. So starting with the proprietorship, proprietorship simply means I'm doing business. I do not have a formal structure. I'm doing business under my name, my social security number. That's referred as proprietorship. There is no partner. There is no corporation. Whatever money I make, I report it under my social security number. This is proprietorship. The second type of structure is partnership. Partnership, proprietorship with a partner. We are working together. Let's create a partnership. Whatever we make, we'll divide it based on the partnership percentage we have. That's partnership. The third structure, which is most popular structure, is referred as LLC, right. limited liability company. Mm. An LLC could be a one member, one owner LLC or multiple owner LLC. You can have as many owners as you want in an LLC. The key here is you have to formally incorporate the company. You have to formally form uh, formation of the company has to happen with the state, with the IRS, with the tax department, with the labor department. So more of a uh, legal formality that you have to go through in order to form the LLC. The next structure becomes S corp, small corporation or a C corp, a large corporation. So S corp is more of a uh, limited structure where you cannot have more than 100 members. You cannot have foreign owners. You have to have uh, all stocks of the same type. So S corp comes with certain restrictions. A C corp is a structure that's typically used when you want to go public. If you have a plan to go for crowdfunding or if you have a plan to go public, then C Corp, the largest structure, is better. In terms of liability protection, let's say if you have a business where the potential for being sued is very high, you want to go with a C Corporation. The highest liability protection is at C Corporation, then S Corp, then LLC, then partnership, then proprietorship. 
in our list of structures when we move from proprietorship, partnership, LLC, S-Corp, C-Corp, the liability protection increases from partnership when we move to C-Corp. Cost of doing business increases when we move from proprietorship to C-Corp. C-Corp has a lot more formalities. Board meeting is, is required, the, the filing is different, different type of forms are needed to be filed as opposed to proprietorship where there is no separate form that you need to file for the business. So in your type of business you have to see what kind of business you are getting in, what kind of revenue you will be having, if you are going to have employees or not, what kind of risk you are expecting in this type of business. Based on that we decide Sanjeevji if it makes sense for you to have an LLC, C Corp, S Corp or partnership. Yes absolutely. Thank you for that information. Now we're going to come to that point where you know whatever your um, personal tax brackets are, you know what's best company that you should set up. But before that, you need that EIN number. Absolutely. All right. Let's talk about EIN number, employer identification number. So when you start a business, you have to get something called EIN, employer identification number. Consider it more of a social security number for your business. Yes. So in a typical business startup, there are three steps to it at a high level. The first step is the state formation. You want to make sure the name that you are choosing for your business is available in the state that you are registering the business. If the name is not available in the state, you may have to choose a different name. The IRS government, the central government, the federal government that's issuing the EIN, they don't have the name control. What it means is you can have the same company in New Jersey with the same name you can have a company in New York. So if you do the EIN registration first and then you are trying to do the state registration, if that name is not available in your state, you may end up in a situation you have the federal registration with that name but the state is not available. So you want to do the state registration first, then you do the federal registration and then you do the tax and labor registration. Tax and labor registration for most states is a single filing. There are some states that make you do a separate tax registration and separate labor registration. Even if you have no payroll or no plans to have payroll, for example, if it's a real estate company, you still are required to do labor and tax registration. It's a mandatory filing for most states. Again, at a high level, you are looking at three steps. The state formation, making sure the name is available. The state gives you an ID. Then you go to the EIN, the federal registration, and then the tax and labor registration. Okay, so that's the EIN part. That's the registration part. Now let's go to licenses. What type of licenses for some small businesses require and how can one person get them? Uh, absolutely. So a lot of businesses require certain licenses. For example, a plumber, an accountant, a CPA will have to have a license in order to practice as a CPA. So all these licenses are governed by the state at the consumer affair level. The Department of Consumer Affair will issue the CPA license or the plumber license or the medical practice license. But that's a secondary step. You have the license, now you choose, do I want to practice under my name as a proprietorship? Do I want to have a partner? Do I want to have an LLC? Do I want to have an S-Corp? Do I want to have a C-Corp? So having the license, Sanjeevji, mm. is important. Yes. It's the first step. If you don't have the license, you cannot get into that business. Correct. The question is, I have the license. I want to get into this business. But what kind of business structure should I be choosing? Do I go with a proprietorship, partnership, LLC, S-Corp, C-Corp, and why? What makes most sense in my case? What's most tax efficient based on my income tax bracket, based on my projection, based on my situation, what's going to be legally protective in my case? That's the way you decide which type of business you want to go with. Okay, very good. So after um, EIN number and the licenses and everything, once you have sorted out, obviously time to think that uh, when do I want to start my tax year for the company? Um, any suggestion on that part? Uh, absolutely. So a tax year by default is a calendar year. All individuals are on calendar year tax basis. So if you have an LLC and all the partners are in this country, it's easier to go with a calendar year because every partner will, will request there is something called a Schedule K-1, sort of LLC profit, that's their fair share for each partner. 
and if each partner is doing taxes on calendar year, it will be easier for you to have the business also based on calendar year. You have the right to choose any year. You can have your year from 1st April to March 31st, 1st July, any year you want. You can choose the month, you can choose the day and you can say oh, my month is start from 1st of this month. It has to be 12 months period but you can choose and you can also change the, the year of filing if you need to. You can't just decide it yourself. You have to make a request with the IRS, with the state and based on that you, can, you have the right to change it. If you have international partners, say for example in India, the tax filing typically is done from April 1st to March 31st. If you have a corporation that does a lot of uh, uh, filings with India, it may make sense for you to have your US corporation also based on fiscal year starting from April 1st to March 31st so you can be consistent. But if you have all local partner, it's easier to manage if you have the calendar year. Okay, besides calendar year, correct me if I'm wrong, besides calendar year, uh, July 1st to June 30th is also one of the most popular, you know, um, year out there. And um, April 1st to March 31st is out there as well, especially when you're doing business international and with Indian company. But here I have seen July 1st to June 30th is also... Yes, absolutely. I mean, July 1st to June 30th, April 1st to... March 31st, 1st October to September 30th, you have the right to choose any year. It doesn't have to be quarter actually. Mm. You can choose from 1st August to July 31st if mm. that makes more sense for you. Mostly the companies that have business internationally, they are the ones typically who will go with a fiscal year or an year that starts during the year as opposed to calendar year. Okay, and before we go any further, let me just tell you viewers, any question that you have, anything that you like to know, please send us an email, taxtalk at itvgold.com. That's the website, taxtalk at itvgold.com. Should you wish to reach out someone at Science CPS Services, you can also give them a call at 908 380-6876. You'll see the information on the screen for your personal or corporate tax returns. Science CPS services will help you, guide you in the right direction. Make sure that all the tax benefits that you are eligible are taken for and whatever your tax liabilities are, they are also accounted for to do your taxes right, Science CPS services. Mr. AJ Kumar is with us. Let's continue with this business uh, structure conversation as we're going to go into more and more details on this. What all kinds of taxes have to be paid when you start a business? That's a great question and it's very confusing. Depending on the business type, depending on the type of structure you choose, depending on what you do in the business, depending on if you have the employees, your tax liability or the tax filing requirements could be very different. For example, consider an auto shop. You have an auto shop, you have few people working for you. So employees means payroll taxes. You have to have the payroll taxes. You have to be worrying about the state taxes. You have to be worrying about the federal taxes. Then there are filing requirements with the state and the IRS that needs to happen every quarter. Say in NJ is WR30, NJ927. In the state of New York, NYS45. With the federal government, you have 941, 940 filing requirements. So when you have payroll, you have certain filing requirements, certain tax payments. Move to the next step. In the auto shop, what else you have? Sales tax. You have to pay the sales tax. You have to collect the sales tax from the customer. You have to pay the sales tax at certain intervals, typically monthly, to the state, the state of New Jersey or the state of New York, whichever state you are operating in. Then move on to the next thing. What are you doing? You are selling tires now. You have the tire tax. Depending on the state to state, if you have a liquor store, then you have a liquor tax over there. So there are, def there are several tax liabilities, tax requirement. If you have a trucking company, you have a highway use tax. So in most businesses, sales tax, payroll tax are typically very, very common. If you have a retail store, you more than likely are paying sales tax and the payroll tax. If you have an IT consulting company, more than likely you are paying payroll taxes. If you have an auto shop, more than likely you have tire tax exposure. If you have a trucking company, you have highway tax. So you have to really know what kind of business you are in. If you have employees, if you are collecting the sales tax, if it's a retail business, and then have the accountant help you decide what are the tax exposures you have, what are the, f the frequency of filing these taxes, paying these taxes, so you can stay on the right side of the road. If there are this many various taxes for each 
kind of company structure out there. Let's talk about record keeping. You know, what kind of records should be kept and how long they should be um, kept uh, within your reach uh, for IRS purposes. Well, the IRS requires you to keep the record for six years. But we recommend everybody, it's not a lot of paperwork. If you can maintain it, try maintaining it as long as you have to. See, IRS requirement is very, very fluid. What they say, unless you have omitted some income intentionally, now who is going to decide if it was intentionally or not? If you have reported majority of the income, I mean, I reported as best as I could. I don't know if I had something that I forgot to report. In those cases, the requirement is six years. So we, unless it's a lot of paperwork, unless it's uh, difficult for you to maintain, you try to keep all these documents, all this paperwork as long as you can. Typically, we advise six years, depending on what you have. Say for employees, you need to maintain the hours daily sheet. So if people are coming in, sometimes they have the punching card, sometimes they have the electronic record, sometimes they have the handwritten card. Whatever they have, you need to maintain the employee records for six years. Just in case if somebody comes back to you after three years, I wasn't paid properly, I was underpaid, I was not paid the overtime. As a business, it's your responsibility to justify, to prove that what you did, what you paid was the right amount. It's not the employee's responsibility. They, anybody can claim anything over here. Then the onus remains on the business to justify that you are maintaining the hourly records, you are maintaining the proper records, and you paid what you were supposed to be paid. Interesting. Um, if I am living in Jersey and I want to start a business, can I, can I uh, register business in a different state? Um, does it work or even in multiple states? Uh, absolutely. You have the right to register businesses any of the 50 states. You want to decide which state you will be conducting the business in. Let's say if you have, if you're buying a property in uh, Arkansas, now it makes sense for you to start the LLC in that state over there. So you can can have the exposure in that LLC over there. If you have an IT consulting company, and let's say it's headquartered in New York, now you have placed a couple of people in California, a couple of people in New Jersey. Now you need to have your company registered in all the states since you are placing people, it will be considered as the payroll registration. If you open a branch office in Delaware, now you need to have a domestic registration, state registration in the state of Delaware. So any state that you are dealing with, you have a nexus with that state. Any state where you have the customers paying you the money, you have a nexus in that state. You need to register your business and pay proper taxes. The good thing is, you do not pay double taxes. Let's say if you made $100, Sanjeev Ji. Mm. Out of $100, $20 came from New Jersey, 20 came from New York, 60 came from California. So you pay tax $100 to the federal government, $20 you pay tax in New Jersey, $20 you pay in New York, and $60 you pay in California. So you are really not paying duplicate taxes, double taxes. I mean, there are some states there where you have the minimum taxes. Say, for example, for a corporation, the state of New Jersey will charge you $500 minimum taxes. You make zero, you don't even the bank account, you don't have the bank account, you did not have any transaction, you still pay minimum $500 for a corporation in the state of New Jersey. So there are some states that will have the minimum tax requirement, but in theory, when it comes to income tax, your income is not dual tax. You pay taxes on the portion of the income in a particular state that's coming from that state only. Okay, interesting. Since, you know, that there are state requirements for minimum taxes and everything, question comes to my mind, why is Delaware or maybe perhaps Nevada, why are these two states most popular when it comes to registering businesses? I'm glad you asked. I, I completely missed it. So even though you can open the company in any of the 50 states, there are very few states where the ownership information is not disclosed on the incorporation documents. Mm. Say, with the state of New Jersey, you pick up any company name, you can pay to the state a couple of dollars and get legally this information from the state who owns this company, when was this company started, who was the starting person, who was the registered agent, what's the address for this company, there is a lot of information that's available publicly by paying couple of dollars by paying a small amount 
with the state of New Jersey. Same thing with the state of New York. You can get a lot of information for most states. You can pay the state a couple of dollars and get this information as who owns the company. There are few states, for example, Delaware. When you start the business, you don't have to report who really owns the company. So if you're trying to start a company where you do not want anybody to find out who owns the company, that's the state. Then Delaware, Nevada, there are some uh, very few states where you choose to go when you are starting a business uh, where you don't want anybody to find out who owns the business. Mm, that's interesting. That's why they are most popular. Now, could that be reason that, I don't know, you know, I want to ask you this question, the why rich guys, for example, um, ex-president of United States of America, Donald Trump, his taxes, tax returns have always been in discussion since last four or five years, a year before he decided to run for uh, president, that's when it started to come in and it still continues. So the, the point I'm trying to make is that how come rich people pay little or no tax and how come upper middle class and lower middle class ends up paying more taxes? Well, I think the perception that the rich people are paying less taxes or uh, most taxes are paid by the middle upper class comes from the fact that most of the income that the middle upper class has is salaried income, W-2 income. Yeah. So when somebody is getting a W-2, a copy of the W-2 is submitted to the IRS and submitted to the state. So the whole wide world, the IRS knows, the state knows, they already know how much money you made. There is no room to play. Your meal expense, your entertainment expense, your travel expense, your office expense, your home office expense, your laptop expense, not claimable when you have a W-2 salary. When you consider when you have a 1099, when you have a small business. Now, the 1099 amount is given to you. The IRS knows how much money you made at the gross level. But you are allowed to claim the laptop, the home office, the travel, the meals, the entertainment, the stationery, everything. So it creates a situation when the 1099 is allowed certain expenses. And if you expand the same example, further to any other small businesses, say for example a grocery store guy. We don't know from an IRS perspective if the grocery that's going to his home is actually coming from the business or not. Mm -hmm. I mean he can claim the grocery expense. So every type of business will have some room, some gray area that the IRS is not able to, to go there. IRS is not and able that's to where, And that's where rich people are taking that's, advantage that's of That's when it, the perception comes yeah. from the fact that a lot of these small businesses who are making good money but are not reporting everything, say okay. cash intensive businesses. Yes. A lot of businesses have cash coming in. Now who is to decide how much cash came in, how much was actually being deposited into a bank and how much was actually being reported on the tax return. So it creates an opportunity Listen, for all these years that hasn't been straightened out. So even going forward, I don't think that's going to be straightened out. There's always <laughs> going to be a gray area. My next question, and quickly we're trying to, to wrap it up as we're coming closer to the end of the show. Um, obviously, to register a business, you need to have an agent, uh, you know, um, uh, certified uh, agent, a registered agent who can help you out. But if I register business under a name, whatever name I want to register, can I still have DBA? Uh, absolutely. See, uh, uh, consider any franchisee, mm. Dunkin' Donut, for example. You can't really put Dunkin' Donut as your business name because Dunkin' Donut is already taken by somebody and there are 500 Dunkin' Donuts out there. So you create your business as AJ Kumar LLC DBA doing business as Dunkin' Donut. Then the name of the business, the board that you put outside is the DBA. If you have, let's say, five restaurants, each restaurant is the same name. You want to put the same board outside. But legally, you have different partnership in each company because you have different investors for the each location. So you create separate LLC, S Corp for each location, and then you put the DBA as the name that you want to put outside on the board. Okay, very good. Last question. Can I set up a company with non-resident partners, shareholders? Uh, absolutely. So you can have a company even with 100% foreign ownership. Having a social security number is not a mandatory requirement to form the company. There are certain restrictions that are put in place. You cannot have an S Corp. You have to go with an LLC or a C Corp. But you do not have to have a social security number to open the LLC. We'll have a separate episode completely based on foreign business registration. 
but please understand you can have foreign partners, foreign investors, foreign company, somebody who is not here, who has never been here, who doesn't intend to be here, they have the right to form the company in this country. Okay, very interesting. Anything else you like to add in the end in just a minute? Uh, absolutely. When it comes to business, I tell all the new business owners, it always looks bad from outside. When you jump into it, you can make it work. A lot of people keep thinking about starting business and never end up doing it. And the only repent you will have, what if you had tried? If it does not work, you can always dissolve the business. No big deal. You try it, it works out great. If it does not work out, you can always dissolve it. But you owe it to yourself to give it a try. America is the land of opportunity. And if you're thinking about starting your own business and really not sure what to do, Sci CPA Services can definitely help you out setting up your business, registering for a business, and all the details, they can definitely help you out how it's that related with your personal taxes. Ajay Ji, thank you so very much once Absolutely. again for all your guidance and suggestion. With that note, I am running out to register business for myself. <laughs> no, Absolutely. I'm just kidding. Uh, for that, with that note, we come to the end of the Tax Talk show this week. Until we meet again next week, same place, same time, with another interesting topic. Remember, Science CPA services for all your accounting needs. I am Sanjeev Pandya, wishing you all happy and tax-free days ahead. So long. Mm -hmm.